Today we're building a small backyard patio that's just about 100 square foot out of uh, red brick pavers. It's a great little uh, DIY job you can do yourself for around 200 bucks in a day or two. This one took us about eight hours. We started by digging out the topsoil and driving in stakes into the four corners of the patio. These are really important because they're what we tie the guidelines to. Run guidelines from one end of the patio to the other, making sure they're level. A great way to check uh, to make sure they're level is using a small line level. Uh, you can buy one at Home Depot for uh, just a few dollars. Once those are done, drive in more stakes in the opposite direction. These are really important too because you have to pitch the patio slightly away from the house, about one inch per six foot of patio. This prevents water from running into the house that can cause leaks and erosion and cracks in your foundation. Tie your string lines really tight and double check them with a level before you start excavation. And make sure to take your time with the lines because they're your guide for all the steps to follow. Normally you would also dig out for a base material, but we didn't need one here uh, based on the soil conditions. To find out what type of base you need where you live, you can either do a soil bore or dig down and uh, check the soil yourself. Hard soils like caliche don't need an additional base because uh, it's hard as a rock. When you're done excavating, use a rake or a screed to smooth the surface and remove any stone. Uh, this layer doesn't have to be perfect because sand goes on top, but you don't want stone left behind that can get into the sand base. I like to pick up my sand uh, for small jobs in a pickup truck. It's easier to haul and spread if you remove the tailgate and back the wheelbarrow right up to the bumper. To prevent damage to an existing patio, driveway, or walkway, uh, put a block or uh, some plywood under the wheelbarrow when you dump it. Spread the sand evenly, but don't worry about getting it perfectly level yet. That's what the guide poles are for. Set your guide poles into the sand, one about every 8 to 10 feet. Measure down from the guidelines to make sure the poles are pitched properly and level. Take your time here because this step is super important. Don't start screeding sand until the poles are set perfectly. Once the poles are set, use a long screed to push and pull the sand back and forth until it's flat and even. As long as the poles were set properly, the sand base will turn out perfect. We're using a wood screed here, but a metal one is better if you have one. But if you only have wood, make sure it's perfectly level before you use it or the uh, the sand base won't be flat. The edges are a little harder if you're building a patio that's inside an existing patio like we are here. Uh, install an end pole like you did before measuring down from the guidelines to make sure it's pitched and level properly. Uh, then use your screed and trowel to get the surface smooth. Remove excess sand as you get to the edges with your trowel. Edges can be hard to do if all you have is a screed so I recommend using different sized mason's trowels. They come in handy when you're working in tough spaces like around this drain pipe and fence where it would be really hard to fit the screed uh, into these small spaces. When you're done with one end, just repeat the exact same process on the other end of the patio. Uh, you'll see when we, we get to it that that end is a little bit easier to work with, but there's a set of steps there, so that can be tricky too. Uh, that's why uh, having different sized trowels can help. When you're done screeding, remove the poles and fill in the void. Uh, with new sand. Use a trowel to smooth the surface. You can't use your screed for this because the poles are gone, so take your time. Carefully glide the trowel back and forth over the surface without using too much pressure downward or you'll risk damaging the surface. Next, drive in a new stake and run another string line. This new line is a guide for setting your pavers. Because we're installing a patio inside another patio, our line has to match the existing paver line. But if your patio stands alone, Keep this guide perpendicular to the house. You can use a square to help you. Then start setting your pavers. When you set the pavers, make sure you lock them in tight to one another and stay on that guideline. As long as the pavers are tight and you follow the guideline, it's hard to make a mistake. Eventually you're going to get to the edges where you'll most likely need to make some cuts. Mark the cuts in pencil by holding them over the edge or by using a tape measure. Then cut the pavers with a grinder, chop saw, or a circular saw. If you're old school, you can use a brick chisel, but for most DIYers, a saw works best. Use a really good quality masonry blade and wear a mask because brick dust is bad for your lungs. Um, you can also use a blower like we are here to control where the dust goes uh, because you really don't want the dust blowing all over your house. Once the cuts are all done, you can install the pieces one by one until the pavers are all set all around the uh, edges of the patio. 
Then it's time to tamp the pavers in place. For large patios, we use a vibratory compactor, but for small jobs, a two by and rubber mallet works fine, especially when the patio butts up against another patio, driveway, or a walkway. Uh, move the two by along and whack it with medium pressure. This step helps set and lock the pavers in place into each other, uh, but it doesn't really drive them down into the sand because the sand base is already uh, compacted. Blow all the dust and debris off the patio um, and use a broom for anything larger like stone. This is an extra important step if you're using polymeric sand like we are here. Spread the sand evenly over the entire patio and brush it into the joints using a clean broom. I recommend cleaning the broom before using it to make sure there's no dirt uh, that can mix into the sand. Then just uh, sweep until all the joints are filled. Um, this step is actually fairly easy. Uh, you want the sand to go all the way to the top of the paver and fill the entire joint um, from the bottom of the joint all the way to the top. And uh, just keep sweeping until you're done. Then blow off all excess sand with your blower and finally you mist water over the top of the patio. Don't use anything but a mister or you'll wash sand out of the joints and you can also water down the glue. Uh, which can cause the polymeric sand to become kind of brittle and uh, can actually even call, uh, grow mold. Uh, so just a real light misting. Uh, if you do this step correctly, the joints will become really hard and that'll help prevent weeds and bugs. So that's it. This patio can be built in just a day or two uh, for around 200 bucks with materials from any Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, it took us a total of about eight hours with three guys. Uh, so if you're by yourself or with one other person, um, maybe two days uh, but it's it's not hard it's easy to do and it's something anybody uh, anybody can do